Cool info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be correcting something we discussed a few years back. We're going to correct a discovery and a scientific study about one of the most distant objects we've seen so far. The object that was hailed as the most distant individual star ever discovered, and that's visible right here, Arendelle. Something we've discussed in some of the previous videos in the description, and something that, when discovered, was super, super exciting. But turns out the universe loves to surprise us. And turns out that our understanding of this record breaker, and also other similar stars, may need to change just a little bit because of some of the most recent discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope. And so let's explore Arendelle and a few other objects similar to it, and find out what's going on here, and what we think this probably is. Because it's quite likely that Arendelle is not a single star after all, and may actually reveal something else about the early universe that we're going to be discussing today. But first, so exactly what is this, and how was this discovered? And the story here starts a few years back. Sometime in mid-2022, the astronomical community was captivated by a groundbreaking discovery made by the Hubble Space Telescope. A discovery of a strange gravitational lens you see right here, that seemed to contain an extremely bright object, referred to as Arendelle, at a staggering distance of 28 billion light years away from us. With the light from this object traveling for 12.9 billion years, equivalent to a redshift of just over 6. And this remarkable discovery was made possible through the phenomenon referred to as gravitational lensing. Here, a very massive cluster known as WHL0137-08 acted like a giant magnifying glass, concentrating the light from the star and allowing us to see it. Here, the magnification was approximately 40,000 times. And because it was so far away, and because it was so bright, it was given the name Arendelle meaning morning star. And additionally, in 2023, we also got some observations from the James Webb that we've actually discussed in one of the videos in the description, which classified this object as a potentially very massive B-type star, much hotter and much more massive than the Sun, but also maybe suggesting that there was a partner and that this was a binary system. But now we have this new research that was just released a few days back by Massimo Pascal and his collaborators. And this was once again using James Webb, but this time what's known as near-spec prism spectroscopy that presents us with some new discoveries nobody expected. With this new study suggesting that this is very likely not just a star, it's most likely a star cluster. And the reasoning here is pretty solid. And that's because during the original observations and original calculations, it was only assumed to be a star based on the potential size. Here the original estimates suggested that this was a very small object possibly just 4,000 astronomical units across, due to the very strong lensing models that were initially used for this study. But they might have actually ignored something very important, potential effects from the invisible dark matter. And so when scientists in this study included dark matter calculations and specifically the halo calculations, the intrinsic size for this object was now increased to maybe 3 parsec or just over 6 light years or like six and a half light years, which doesn't actually make it a star as much as it potentially makes it a cluster. And specifically, a globular cluster, kind of similar to what you see right here, that usually represents some of the brightest objects in the entire galaxy. With additional calculations suggesting that the magnification here was unlikely to be so large, it was unlikely to be in thousands, but was more likely to be closer to about 43 to maybe 67 times, which would actually make a lot more sense. And so because the magnification was much lower, it's extremely unlikely that we're seeing individual stars, simply because this is once again 28 billion light years away from us. But that's not the only evidence we have from the study, and there's actually quite a lot more, and specifically spectroscopic fingerprints. The data from the GWST's near-spec instrument seem to show a spectral feature that actually directly matches global clusters, in including the ones in our own galaxy. As a matter of fact, it seems to be almost identical to what we usually find around us, and even identical to the other objects visible right here, which has been identified as a cluster and not an individual star. And so basically what we're seeing here are a bunch of star clusters, which is actually still pretty exciting. Because global clusters and the cluster formation is one of the ongoing mysteries in cosmology, and we do want to understand how they formed and why some galaxies seem to have so many more compared to other galaxies. But based on this new analysis, here's what we think we're looking at and what this object is. It's essentially an intermediate age cluster, anywhere from 30 to 150 million years in age, and mostly containing hydrogen and helium. Here the total metallicity is approximately 10% of our sun. And these particular properties are expected from what we refer to as progenitors of global clusters. 
or basically BB clusters that eventually formed structures like this. But it also seems to be just a little bit closer at the redshift of 5.926, or about 27.3 billion light years away instead of 28. And additionally, researchers have also observed something known as photometric variability, or basically very, very small changes in brightness resulting from the very massive object in front of it slowly moving across and slowly changing how this object looks from a distance. And so these changes caused by microlensing are usually more pronounced for smaller objects than the ones that are bigger like global clusters. And in this case, these changes have not been observed implying that this object is indeed quite large and supporting the cluster hypothesis. But if what we're looking at here are clusters and not the most distant stars, so what's the new record holder that we have? And what's the farthest officially confirmed star out there? Well, there's actually a few candidates and some of them have been confirmed, but some of them have only been announced a few months back. And intriguingly, some of them have really strange names after Japanese monsters. For example, we have a star known as Godzilla, that we actually discussed in one of the previous videos. We have another star known as Mothra, and we have a few more stars named after different kaiju. And so, for example, this Mothra seems to be a binary system in the constellation of Eridanus at a redshift of 2, or approximately 10.5 billion light years away from us. This is a yellow and blue supergiants that only became visible because of the gravitational lens once again. But at a slightly farther distance we have Godzilla. This is a redshift of 2.37 or 10.9 billion light years away that was originally identified as the most luminous star discovered to date. But just like Arendelle, researchers are now questioning whether this is also maybe a cluster and not a star. Mostly because its luminosity and some of the signals it's producing are just a little bit too unusual for a star, but are much more common in clusters. However, a few months back, this particular study that you can find in the description potentially identified not one, but two separate stars that are now the official record holders for being most distant stars ever seen. And once again, seen as a result of gravitational lensing from this galactic cluster known as Max J0647. And so in this study, Mina and his team go through an extremely detailed analysis of the gravitational lensing effects in a process describing the discovery of two incredibly distant star candidates once again visible to the James Webb. But here they don't even have a name yet. They're just referred to as Star 1 and Star 2. And if the nature of these stars is confirmed, being at a redshift of 4.8, they would be about 25 and a half billion light years away from us. So just a little bit closer than the Arendelle, but way, way farther than everything else. And so far, based on the size and the light we see coming from this, they seem to be once again very hot, massive B-type stars, with the star 1 estimated to be 10,000 Kelvin and possibly 20 masses of the Sun, and star 2 being 12,000 Kelvin and 50 times the mass of the Sun. But importantly, in this study researchers believe these are stars and not clusters, because so far they do seem to be very, very compact and very, very small, with the current size estimate just not really matching known clusters. Although I guess as we've learned from previous studies, this can obviously still change. Likewise, the spectral energy distribution also seems to match what we expect from very hot distant stars and not necessarily clusters. Here this was confirmed through various emissions, including hydrogen emissions, and what's known as the Balmer break. But importantly, for the first object, star 1, it actually does not seem to contain any additional lenses, or basically it suggests that it's unique, which kind of supports the idea that it is an extremely small compact object, which is why it was only lensed once. A larger object has a chance of lensing several times and producing individual mirror images. And this is kind of what we see for star 2. It seems to contain several copies, which of course suggests that there's a chance it's a cluster and not a star. But if confirmed, this would be some of the first stars we've seen when the universe was just 900 million years old, representing unique primordial stars and objects nearly as old and nearly as far as the previous record holder, Arendelle. And though obviously scientists have discovered even more distant objects, including the most distant galaxy, Mom Z14 that we discussed in one of the previous videos, the galaxy that existed when the universe was only 280 million years old, being able to discover an individual star is actually a completely different story, mostly because it does require a very special alignment of these gravitational lenses, and we just have to get super lucky to be able to see it, because it has to be in the right spot. And even though Arendelle is still exciting because it might be a primordial globular cluster, a lot of new research will probably shift to these two objects in order to find out exactly what they are and if these are stars, what kind of stars they seem to be. 
but all of this is mostly recent research, and so we don't really have any answers yet. And also because this is so far away, it's actually ridiculously difficult to study this. But until future studies and new record holders, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few more things. Alternatively, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.